sunshine for you And everything you do Yeah, they were all yellow Oh, do you search me? You know my way Even when I fail Holy presence surrounding me in every season. I know you love me. Oh, I know you. the cross I bow my knee where your blood was shed for me there's no greater love than this you have overcome the grave your glory fills the highest place what can separate me now the cross I bow my knee where your blood was shed for me there's no greater love than this you have overcome the grave your glory fills the highest place what can separate me from my eyes and you stand before me I know you love me I know you What's up, HSM? Okay, let's get this talk going. But before I do that, I wanna ask you something. Because listen, here's the deal. I really miss you. And once again, this week, we're back online. But it doesn't mean we can't have a little conversation. Because I wanna know, how are you doing? I mean, how are you doing really? So on a scale, one to 10, Okay, I want you just to rate on where you are and how you're doing right now. So let's start off with a little easy one. How awake are you right now? Are you wide awake or are you like, oh, I am so tired, okay? Or how much did you enjoy the music from Josh and Carter today? For me, I gotta give it a 10, okay? So, so good, right? But how about this one? 
How emotionally draining was school this week, <laughs> okay? Only one, okay, sorry. One is the lowest that we're going to go. So just kind of rate it in there. How about this one? Rate your happiness this week. I mean, how happy were you this week? Were you a 10 or were you more like a five and a half, right? How about this one? Did you have any sadness this week? Hmm, my family did. I'm not sure if you heard, but we had to say goodbye to Bailey on Friday. And it was really sad, you know, to be able to, like after 12 years with a really great dog. But okay, let's move forward, right? I don't want to stick in my sadness. Let's go with faith. How, how's been your faith journey this week? So on a scale one to 10, Right? how well did you read your Bible this week? And not just read it. You know, we say here at HSM all the time, we don't want you just reading your Bible. We want you to understanding your Bible. Okay, so how do you do this week? How about taking time to pray? Come on, be real. How much time did you spend just connecting with God? How about this one? One more, this is the last one. On a scale, one to 10, how much time did you spend this week talking about your faith with someone else? Hmm, yeah. See, I don't know about you, but some days it just seems like our mental health, our emotional health, even our spiritual health slides all over the place. I mean, one moment we're like, yes, we feel good, we're doing good. And then the next moment, oh, not so good. I remember a time as a new Christian when I was really stressed out. I mean, I was dealing with a bully in my life. I had friends who just didn't get me. I broke up with my girlfriend. And schoolwork, don't get me started. I always hated schoolwork. And then on top of all that, I just had some tension with my dad. And I was angry and hurting. And I remember shouting at God so desperately wanting him to show up in my life. And after I finished shouting, all I heard was my own voice echoing back to me. And I couldn't help but feeling as if God just didn't care. And if he did care, then he wasn't paying attention to me or he was way too distracted to help me or he couldn't help me because I was just that far gone. Like some of you, I was told my entire life that God is so good, that God is so loving, that God is so helping. But in that moment, I didn't believe that. I didn't believe that truth. And I really felt that God was just letting me down. Let me ask you this. Have you ever felt like that? Or, or maybe you feel like that right now. Like you just can't see God because of all this stuff that you're trying to deal with. Sure, there was a time when faith and your view of God just seemed to make sense. It was easier. But let's be honest, it was easier. And you're thinking, well, Roger, why would you say that? Well, because see, I hear you and I talk to you and I know what you are missing. And HSM, I miss it too. Because it was not that long ago that we were a youth ministry that did a lot together. Come on, do you remember the times that like every week you could connect and see and talk with a leader who, and by the way, still loves and cares about you? I mean, do you remember the times that every week we would get together and you could hear, you know, encouraging messages? And some weeks you heard two encouraging messages and you took part in deep discipleships and group discussions. And twice a year, I mean, we did a retreat but then all of a sudden that was stolen from us. And we're told that getting together wasn't safe and going to church is not essential. And because of all of this, some of you, you feel alone, abandoned and not essential. And then there's all this current noise screaming at you, telling you it's not safe, but that's okay. Uh, oh, you shouldn't go here, but you can go there. Y you should get it. What, you don't have it? Oh, because you don't have it, then you shouldn't or you can't. And as a student, here you are trapped in the middle and you're like, I'm not sure what to do. I'm not sure what to believe. I'm not sure what to think. And then added to all that noise is everything else that's already happened to you and is happening around you right now. I mean, some of you are like, I'm just trying to keep my friends happy. And this dating relationship that, I, that I'm in is not what I really thought it would be. 
And then you got this drama at home with the family. And then you got school stuff, sports stuff, and there's so many other things get piled up and put in front of you. And some of you, let's be honest, you're struggling. And some of you, you're in trouble because of the choices you've been making. And some of you, you're stressed out and you find yourself in this constant loop of worry and anxiety. And some of you are feeling like there's no hope. But you've heard about Jesus. Come on, you remember us saying to you over and over again that Jesus loves you. And that hasn't changed. He cares about you. And that hasn't changed. And he can help you. And some of you, you're like, but Roger, I so desperately want that to be true. But I have all this stuff going on in my life. And you're like, I don't remember the last time I actually read my Bible or prayed. And I want to come to church, but is it open? Is it safe? And some of you are even saying right now, church doesn't even feel the same anymore. And as your youth pastor and your friend, can I just be honest with you? I get it. But can I be honest? So listen to me very carefully right now. Because I believe that we've lost our focus. Because can I reassure you that he, Jesus, he's still here, okay? I don't mean here, you know, with me. He's there with you, okay? He hasn't abandoned you, nor has he given up on you. The problem is we've just allowed life to get in the way. We've allowed everything else to kind of blur our, our vision, and right now, you may not be able to quite make, make him out, but can I reassure you today that Jesus is there and he is paying attention and he sees what's going on. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of you right now, you are really focused on Jesus and you see him very clearly. And while others of you, not so much. See, some of you have given up. Okay, no, hang on. You haven't given up on what you believe. Yes, you still believe in Jesus, but you've stopped trying to focus on him and what he can do for you. And you have redirected your focus on what you think you need right now instead of going to Jesus and asking him what you really need right now. And some of you, man, you are trying your hardest to refocus on him. But it feels as if he's not focused on you. And if you're honest with me and with yourself today, you're getting discouraged. And all of this is heavy on your heart because all you want is to know that you're going to be okay and that you're going to survive this. And I want you to know that Jesus can and will help. Some of you are like, I really clearly need to see Jesus. I really want to experience the life that Jesus promises. Hey, can I ask you a question? What would it look like for you to approach Jesus with what's on your mind? Come on, hold on, don't lose me here. What would it look like for you to approach Jesus with what's really going on inside your heart? What would it look like for you to ask him to help you to see clearly and that for you to trust him in the moments that you're living right now? Listen, your relationship with Jesus, it matters, it's important. And today what I want to do is I wanna read a passage from the Bible. And it's all about this blind man who had this life-changing encounter with Jesus. And truth be told, some of you watching right now, that's what you need. You need a life-changing encounter with Jesus, and you know it. And as we dive into this you know, true historical account over the next two weeks, I believe this blind man's experience with Jesus has a very important message for you who often feel blinded by all this stuff in your life. And you need Jesus to help you to see him clearly. All right, here's the deal. I want you to grab your Bibles or your Bible or open up your Bible hat to Mark chapter 10. As we dive into this story over the next two weeks, I believe this blind man's experience will have a very important message for those of you who 
right now may feel blinded by all the stuff in your life and you need Jesus to help you to see him clearly. So I want you to grab your Bible, okay? Or open up a Bible app and I want you to find Mark chapter 10. No, seriously, I want you to go and grab your Bibles or open the Bible app. Just, just don't wait for the words to come up on the screen. It's so important for us to have God's word in front of us because you may, you may not know, I could change a word. I could rearrange the story a little bit. So you wanna make certain that you're following along in your Bible. So Mark chapter 10, okay, you got it? Okay, we're gonna start in verse 46. All right, here we go. It says, when they reached Jericho, okay? Okay, and the they is Jesus and his disciples. So they were going to Jericho just to, you know, uh, teach and to hang out and share the good news. And it says, and as Jesus and his disciples left town, hold on a second, I find that kind of interesting because I think what's kind of, a lot's happened right here in those few lines. So they came to Jericho. So they were in the city of Jericho and they were hanging out and they were preaching and they were teaching and Jesus doing what Jesus does. And then all of a sudden now they're leaving, okay? And they're heading back home. And it says, as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. So remember, he's hanging out there all day and people are hearing that Jesus is there and a large crowd has gathered. Now Jesus is heading back out and they're still following him. And then it says this, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Check out verse 48. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, Tell him to come to me. Okay, we're, we're gonna pause the story right there, okay? Next week, we're gonna finish the story. But I wanna dive into this part. So first, let's talk about what's happening here in this historical account. First of all, we're told the guy's name, and that's so important. So the guy's name was Bartimaeus, and we are told that he was blind, and that he was a beggar on the side of the road just outside of Jericho. Now, I can assume that this road was really busy, okay? I'm not an expert on begging, right? But I would assume if you were begging for people to help you, you wouldn't be like looking or trying to find a nice quiet street where you can just set up and go, wow, this is a quiet street. This would be a great place to beg. No, right? You want to be where the people are. So I'm assuming that this blind beggar, Bartimaeus, had a really good spot on a really busy street so that he could hear people walking by and that he could beg and ask for what he was looking for. You know, their spare change, the leftovers, you know, that after a meal or whatever. And so that's what he would do. He would sit on the side of the street and he would beg. But word on the street was that Jesus was in the neighborhood and people were talking about his teaching and all the amazing miracles that he has done and that he was doing. And all of a sudden, blind Bartimaeus, who, who may not be able to see, but he could hear. And maybe he was thinking, wait a second, this is my chance. This Jesus guy, he has to walk by me and leave the city. And if this Jesus is everything that everyone has been talking about, then I am going to ask him to help me. Because the reality is, I'm really sick and tired of being blind and begging for my survival. Okay, hold on, hit the pause moment. Begging to survive. Okay, can we just hit the pause button just for a moment? Because I just wanna talk. Because some of you are thinking, what's the point, Roger? What, what, is, you know, what does this have to do with me? Are you ready for this? Seriously, I need you to focus right now. Because sometimes I think we spend so much time begging for the scraps of this world, thinking it will satisfy the emptiness in our lives. Hold on, let me say that again. Because I think, actually I believe that we spend so much time begging for what this world has, thinking it's going to satisfy our lives. It's like we desire what the world has more than we long for what God offers. See, the culture around us, 
keeps selling us this idea of what it means to be happy, what it means to be fulfilled, what it means to be successful, what it means to be cool, you know, accept it. And honestly, <laughs> it's nothing more than scraps when it comes to compare it to what Jesus is offering. Listen, listen to this. Because Jesus said, Jesus is recorded in the pages of Scripture saying, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. How about this one? Jesus said that he came so that you and I will have a life better than we can dream of. Okay. Want some more? Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 says, But my God, I love this, okay? But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. By who? By Christ Jesus. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, you still with me? Okay, good. So let's look at this. If Jesus can, okay, if Jesus can fill us, if Jesus says, hey, if you hunger and thirst for my righteousness and you will be filled, okay, you know, not our righteousness. It doesn't say, hey, if you hunger and thirst for other things. No, he's very clear. He goes, if you hunger and thirst, like crave, desire, you know, the things of Jesus, he says, it will fill you up, okay? And then he says that, you know what, if you want a life, you want a real life, See, the reality is the world only offers us an existence. But Jesus, says, I got a life for you, a good life. And Jesus says, not only you know, will I fill you up, not only will I give you a better life, but then it, then it says that you know, all these things are given to us out of the riches of God's glory. Whoa, I want that. And I think you want it too. So the question is, then why are we so focused on cheap knockoffs? Come on, I don't know about you, but no one likes to be ripped off or taken advantage of. But yet we allow the world to do this every do this to us every day when we believe it's lies. Okay? When we believe that the world has something better than Jesus? Come on. It's a knockoff. It's not even real. Okay, let me put it to you this way. When we are constantly begging or focusing on what the world has, we'll end up getting what the world gives. Listen, this world seriously overpromises and it underdelivers. It promises everything, and in the end, it will leave you so unfulfilled. My friends, listen, what this world offers will always, listen to me, I'm being blunt here, okay? It will always leave you lost and in the dark. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. In the moment, you may have this feeling of fulfillment and it's fun, but it's so short-lived. Let me ask you this. Do you really want what some of those wants may lead to? Come on, think about that. Do you really want what some of those wants or some of the things that the world tells you and I that we need? Okay, let's look, let's, let's look at it, okay? I mean, what may look like fun now, but will it be fun tomorrow? Okay, let's just pick one. Let's pick one random thing, all right? So you want to go out and you want to have a few drinks with your friends. Okay, go ahead and do that. But do you want what it could turn into? Do you want to wake up as a teenage alcoholic? Or do you want to look into your future and see that you haven't reached your potential because that has the potential of stealing your, yeah, potential? Or maybe you feel as if this is what you need to cope. But all of a sudden you wake up the next day and you got that feeling of shame. So then what happens? Then you need something else to help you feel better. You believe it's okay to fill your mind with this or that, but now you're realizing how messed up your thoughts are. And at times you just feel like, oh, I'm so angry or I'm just so sad all the time. Listen, the reality is the world will take and take and take and give you nothing back. It promises, look at this, but you peel back all the layers, it under delivers. Hey, can I be honest? As your youth pastor and as your friend, I'm worried about you, okay? I really am. It's just like we are filling ourselves up on junk food. You know, sure, you had the illusion of being full, but you're still empty because junk food doesn't give you the necessary nutrients that your body needs to live and to function well. And it's the same when it comes to the things of this world. Oh yeah, for a while you may feel so fulfilled, but the reality is 
you'll be empty and wanting more and you're just not functioning the way that you were designed to function as a child of God. And sadly, this will take its toll on your faith and your relationship with God. Because when this world is finished with you, it will leave you on the side of the road begging for survival. And you're worth way more than that. My friends, can I just remind you of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10? It says that you, listen to me, some of you really need to hear this today, that you, you are the masterpiece of God. Did you hear that? That means you have value and that you have worth. And God just didn't, you know, create you for fun. He designed you for a purpose. But the world is trying so desperately to sell us this fake purpose. But Jesus says that he came to give you life, that you are his masterpiece designed in advance to do good things. Because here's the difference with Jesus. He says, if you keep your focus on him, and if you hunger and thirst for what he has, then you will be truly satisfied. He doesn't offer you a knockoff. He offers you the real thing. So the bottom line, this world is just like, yeah, a cheap knockoff for the real life that Jesus offers. So back to the guy in our story. He begged every day to, just to get enough to survive. And eventually he got tired of the scraps and the leftovers from other people. And he heard the good news that Jesus, what Jesus can do. And he just knew if he could just talk to Jesus, then everything could change. So I want you to consider with me two things today. And next week, we're going to look at two more things from this, this true life story. But the first thing I want you to get today when it comes to you and I regaining our focus on Jesus and getting it off the world, it's this. You ready? Number one, you need to get desperate. Okay? Let's, listen, let's go back to the guy in the story because he got desperate. He got tired of begging and getting leftovers and getting, yeah, left out. And I could just imagine his thoughts when he heard about what Jesus can do for his life. I bet you he was like, this is my chance. I'm sick and tired of being blind. And if this Jesus is everything that everyone has been talking about, then I am going to get to him. I am going to find him. I am going to get him to help me no matter what. The guy got desperate. And there's a lot of things in the story that we don't see. But I just kind of have this idea that maybe he's like, okay, I need to get to this part in the street. I need to shuffle myself down. And okay, and I don't know, but I bet you he did everything he could within his ability to get where Jesus was going to be. He got desperate. And here's my question for you. Are you? Do you, do you really need a change? Are you tired of being, you know, ripped off by the cheap knockoffs of this world is trying to sell you as real? Because here's the deal. Jesus is ready. Okay. Jesus is ready. Right? He is ready. I want you to check out this truth, okay? In Ephesians chapter 3, let me find that here. In Ephesians chapter 3. Okay, now check it out, okay? Because Jesus is the real deal. And Jesus is ready to do an amazing things in your life. And just in case you were like, I don't know what Jesus can do. Let me remind you what Jesus can do. Because it says in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Now all glory to God. Check it out. All glory to God who is able, okay, through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. That is so huge. You may think, I don't know God can, but the Bible says, whoa, 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 he can and more. You may, you may think I need this, but God goes, but I got all that for you. It's incredible. But see, some of you right now, you're like, you're probably thinking, Roger, why bother? I tried this before. And see, that's, that's the problem. See, we just tried Jesus? Like what? He, he's, a, he's a sweater that you try on in the mall? Like, hmm, maybe I'll try this on. Maybe it'll look good on me. And we try it on. We're like, ah, I don't know if it fits any good. You know, I'm not sure if I, I like how it looks on me. No, Jesus is not some sweater in the mall. He is the real deal. And maybe what you need to do, instead of just trying Jesus, 
Maybe you just need to commit to Jesus. Did you hear me? Stop trying Jesus a day here and a day there. Why don't you just put Jesus on and commit to the relationship? Hey, you know I love you, so let's keep moving forward. Because look at what verse 47 says. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, okay? So pictures in your mind, okay? Let's go into the story, all right? All of a sudden, Jesus and his disciples, they're, they're leaving Jericho. They're heading home. There's a crowd of people. There's a lot of commotion, and people are talking, people are talking. And all of a sudden, someone just said, hey, Jesus. And Bartimaeus picked up on it. Jesus is in that crowd. So what does he do, okay? All right? He's there. Okay, here's my chance. Here's my opportunity. And what does he do? The Bible says, history records, he begins to shout. He says, Jesus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I love this. Barnabas, he had a need and he wanted to talk to Jesus about it because if Jesus could do what everyone said that he was doing, then he's like, I want him to do something for me. And verse 47 you know, it doesn't it say that, you know, it doesn't say like he was like, mm, uh, excuse me, sir. OK, no, 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 seriously, let's have a little bit of fun with this. OK, he wasn't sitting there on the side of the road and going, uh, Jesus, hey, Rabbi, hey, Mr. Christ, I don't know. You know, hey, it was not too much trouble. Can I get a moment of your time? No, no, he, he wasn't like, you know, just, you know, like like thinking, OK, I'll try to get his attention. But hey, if I don't get Jesus attention and I don't get a chance to connect with him, then you know what? I'm fine. Fine, I'm cool. I'll just stay here begging. No, it says that he began to shout and he began to shout loud at the top of his lungs saying, Jesus, have mercy on me. Hey, when was the last time that you shouted to Jesus to have mercy on you? Come on. When was the last time that you actually yelled out and you called out Jesus to help you, to heal you, to restore you, to forgive you? When was the last time that you acknowledged Okay, in your desperateness that you needed Jesus to do only what Jesus can do for you. I mean, we heard and we hear about all the incredible things that Jesus can do. And we know that we have access to him through prayer. But how often are we crying out to Jesus like Bartimaeus did? I mean, when was the last time that you just said, you know, I'm so tired of all, all the fakeness that this world's trying to sell me? When was the last time you just called out and said, I want something real. And if Jesus is it, then I want it. Jesus, have mercy on me. <laughs> now, some of you, because I know you, you're thinking, Roger, are you saying that I need to go up to my room or in my backyard or anywhere at all and I need to scream at Jesus? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. If that is what you got to do, then do it. If that's what you need to do, then do it. Just acknowledge, just recognize your need for Jesus. And you need to be serious about it. And you need to be passionate about it. So yeah, cry out to Jesus at the top of your lungs. I don't care what your neighbors think. I don't even care what your parents think. Well, I actually do care what your parents think, but you get the idea, right? Just cry out to Jesus. And by crying out to Jesus, like Bartimaeus, it just shows how serious you are because he showed how serious he was about his need for Jesus. And if you have a serious need in your life, you need to be crying out to Jesus. But hang on. Look at this next part of the story. Watch what happened when Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus. See, in the first part of verse 48, it says, as he was calling out to Jesus, as he was trying to get Jesus' attention, as he was trying to get refocused on someone who could help him, that the people around him, the people in that crowd, rebuked him. They told him to be quiet. In other words, they're like, yo, blind beggar, shut up. Jesus doesn't have time for you. Jesus is not interested in you. And some of you, Right now, you're wrestling with your thoughts in your mind. Because see, there's this one part of you that's saying, yeah, I know that, Roger. Yeah, I know. I need to call out and I need to cry out to Jesus to help me. I've got my eyes off of Jesus. I've got my eyes on all the stuff around me and I need to cry out to Jesus. But then you get this other part of you that's screaming really loud right now, telling you to shut up. That's telling you, hey, 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 hold on a second. If you call out to Jesus, then, you, then you're going to have to stop doing this. Or you may have to change that. 
Oh, wait a second. If you call out to Jesus, then you know, you, you know this, this little habit we got right now, and we, we may not be able to continue to do it. See, your thoughts, they're trying to convince you that what you're feeling and what you're doing is normal and that you really don't really need Jesus because you're fine just the way you are. Can I just call that out as a lie? It's a lie. And what, and what about Bartimaeus? What about that moment if he believed the lies that, you know, be quiet, beggar. Jesus doesn't have time for you. Jesus is too busy for you. What if he believed a lie? <laughs> but look what he did. He didn't believe the lie. Because when the voices around him rebuked him and told him to be quiet, what does the Bible say? The Bible says that he shouted even more. He shouted even louder. And that brings me to my second thing. Not only do you need to be desperate, but you need to be relentless. You need to stay focused and be relentless in your desperate, desperateness in calling it to Jesus. Okay? Like, like, be relentless. Don't stop. When, when, when you cry out to Jesus, sure, distractions is going to come, but you need to keep crying out. Listen, discouragement is going to come, but you need to press in. Doubt is going to come, but you need to press in. Don't give up. If Bartimaeus would have listened to the people around him telling him to shut up, he would have remained blind and begging for the rest of his life. And the same is true for you. If you allow the lies of this world and the thoughts in your head to hold you hostage, you will miss out on the incredible life-filling adventure that Jesus wants to release in your life. See, sometimes you and I, we cry out to Jesus, but then we let the distractions, the discouragement, and the doubt to stop us. And what do we do? We give up. But when Bartimaeus kept crying out and he was just persevered, like he just said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep calling out until I hear from Jesus. Look what happened in verse 49. It says that Jesus stopped. He ignored everything else that was around about him. And he said, hey, tell that guy to come here. Listen, when we are relentless, will realize that Jesus, that Jesus is there, okay? You know, he hasn't gone anywhere, he's there. When we're relentless, we will we'll realize that we have his attention. When we are relentless, we will realize that he is calling us to him. Say, Jesus hears when you call on his name. But get desperate, be relentless, and fight through all the noise, and he will make himself known to you. Focus on who is the real deal. Okay, we're gonna stop there, okay? And we're gonna pick this up next week. But here's what I wanna leave you with, all right? I wanna leave, leave you with 1 Peter chapter 5, verse seven. It says, if you cast or you give all your cares and worries to Jesus, and why do you do that? Because he cares about you. So can I challenge you something? That this week, Maybe you're feeling that you just, you've been begging for too much of this world and you've gotten what the world will deliver. A whole lot of hurt, a whole lot of disappointment, a whole lot of distractions. So this week, could you do me a favor? Actually, no, don't do it for me. Do it for you and your relationship with God. Could you give him your stress? Can you give him your anxiety? Can you give him your fears? Can you give him your doubts, your habits, your sins, your struggles, your mistakes, you know, your anger? Can you just give him your life? Can you just take a moment and call out to God? Because he is the only one who can truly give you real life. Like I said before, this world is nothing more than a cheap knockoff of the real deal. And nothing can be, can be compared to a real life relationship with Jesus. So my friends, get desperate. Acknowledge that you are designed for more than to beg for the scraps of this world because you are the masterpiece of God. So come on, what are you waiting for? Right now, right where you are, call out to him. Silence the noise and the lies because he is calling you into a great relationship with him. Can I pray for you? Hey God, Thank you for your word. 
And thank you for the truth that you love us and you care for us. But God, the world is trying really hard to lie to us and rip us off and telling us, no, 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 we don't need Jesus. We need all this other stuff. God, may we not believe those lies anymore. May we just acknowledge you right now and that we need to call out to you. We need to ask you for forgiveness. We need to ask you to heal us of the blindness that we have right now that's keeping us from seeing you clearly. So Lord, I pray for my HSM friends. I love them and care about them and I miss them. But Lord, I know right now, wherever they are, as they listen to this message, that if they would just humble themselves and call on your name, that you will hear them and that you will set them free from anything that's holding them back because you truly do have a life for them better than they can ever imagine. And may they believe that today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, like I said, I love you, care about you. But this week, take some time, get desperate, and call out to Jesus. He's waiting to hear from you. Until next week. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come. Long just to bring something that's of earth that will bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song for a song in itself. It's not what you have required. You search much deeper within. Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart yeah. I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it and it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless words, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself It's not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear you're looking into my heart, yeah I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you And it's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made When it's all about you When it's all about you Jesus